So uh, with, the, with that slight adjustment to the agenda, um, uh, I was asked late yesterday afternoon to at least um, coordinate this meeting. So I will kick it off and simply say, um, uh, as we always have, um, everyone is welcome to participate. Um, there is an expectation of uh, respect, mutual respect in the discussions that we have. Um, and uh, this is an open forum, so any anti-competitive behavior is um, uh, deeply frowned upon and will be addressed immediately um, on that. So um, the agenda, we have quite a few topics, and as I said, I think the Aurora review is, and the discussion on that is likely to consume. Um, uh, All right, subsequent. minutes page is created. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on it. Uh, Salona, you got um, coverage on the announcements. Yeah, so actually, um, Dave was handling that with Min, so I'll go ahead and let him do the fill-in for that piece. Yeah, so uh, the only thing we've got in the announcements for this morning is the internship program. Um, we, Min and I met earlier this week, and Min has been doing a wonderful job of this, but uh, we had to get together and dot all the I's, cross all the T's. So, um, hold on a second, I'm trying to find my notes real quick, getting back to where I was at. Okay, yeah, so we have a total of 27 proposals. Um, we have now closed the period officially. Um, the next step is we need somewhere between 10 and 20 volunteers who want to help uh, be part of the selection committee. Uh, it is open to anybody in the hyperledger community, not just TSC members, not just staff, but anybody who's interested in um, reading through the proposals and making their selections. We need to select 15 out of the 27. Um, so if you want to volunteer, go ahead and email me. I have my email there in the uh, agenda. Um, I'll also send an announcement out to the TSC list later today. Um, the, uh, we finalized the, team, the timeline for this process. The, we're gonna give one week for the selection process so it'll be done it'll close next thursday so that we can announce it on the following monday and open up for intern applications um volunteering for the selection committee is only for selecting the proposals um and the mentors then will participate in, in interviewing the intern applicants so it's a it's a real light lift for the volunteers um we have timed the internship program so that it will close um, on May 9th and announce all the interns. Uh, we did this because it's really close to the end of Google Summer of Code. I think it's within like a day or two so that uh, students applying to both or a bunch of different internship programs will all be announcing roughly the same time. Um, that's pretty much it. We have a really strong slate of, of programs or proposals. Uh, we have selection criteria already in the, yeah. I, ha I have the, doc the, the system set up for doing the selection process and we have selection criteria in there and everything. So if you want to volunteer, go ahead and email me. I'll add you to the list and we'll get going. That's pretty much it. Right. Any questions for Dave on that? Okay. Um, Thank you, Dave. Uh, next up is the quarterly report for Hyperledger Explorer. Um, I think everybody had an opportunity to review it. Um, uh, Arno, Chris, um, uh, and Silas, I think, are the only ones who haven't checked off on it. Are there uh, any specific questions about the Hyperledger Explorer? Actually, I, I did review it, but on my phone, so I didn't. I didn't oh, you didn't it check it off? OK, right. perfect. Right. Yep. Um, uh, so any, do we have someone representing Explorer on the call today? Okay, dead silence. I guess we won't do questions on it. Um, it looked pretty straightforward to me and I think uh, given that we've got the reviews and everything else taken care of, I think we'll move on on that. Uh, if there are any additional questions, just make sure you add them to the comment section. Yeah, uh, the hard thing with Explorer is most of them are based out of China, by the way. Yeah. Okay, um, so next up, um, I'm not sure where this came from, but there's been a, a request to 
um, move the TSC to an every two weeks schedule. So um, this was an, a discussion that we were having uh, with uh, Kelly and Dan uh, in regards to scheduling. And this was uh, a, a proposal that Brian had mooted. Um, so that's where it came from. OK. Um, this is an, OK, I'll just. Uh, we have two items for discussion that are sort of agenda related things um, and they seem likely to end up bound together a little bit. Um, so what are the thoughts, first off, what are the thoughts on moving the TSC to two weeks, um, to an every two week schedule? Um, and then I'm gonna bring in this issue of when we discuss that, keep in mind that we have a pretty substantial backlog of things that we keep suggesting that we need to talk about. I have to admit, I I manipulated the agenda that way because I while I understand, <laughs> while I understand that people do want to move it to every two weeks, I'm having a hard time clearing the backlog. So, you know, it's like I understand that people would want to do that, but I've got this backlog, so um, that's going to be a little bit tough. Um, so, this is Vipin. Um, I have a couple of uh, observations. One is um, we have already effectively less than on a two-week schedule because of the multiple cancellations. Second, so we have to look at the data to see how, how often did the TSC meet in spite of the schedule, which is every week. The second is in terms of the backlog, we have already set up a procedure to have uh, asynchronous interaction with the uh, with the uh, uh, you know updates the reports similarly there could be more engagement on the mailing list or otherwise that would uh, make you know even moving the agenda to every two weeks work with the backlog if people participate uh, in the uh, discussions and uh, give their approvals and do everything on the mailing list. Or any form of asynchronous interaction. I th I think so this is Arno. I would like to know how many people actually support this among the TSC members. I don't. I, I don't. don't. I don't either. I do not either. I think um, if, if there's nothing scheduled, we should we should just cancel the meeting. But in general, there's. I feel we missed too many of them already because of right. people just staff being somewhere or whatever. Right. I, I would agree with this. I am not supportive at all of cutting it back. The existence of a backlog sort of means that we're <laughs> precisely <laughs> aren't. <laughs> precisely. Okay. So See, I, I don't. By the, by the way, guys, we are now at quorum. Just FYI. Oh, outstanding. I don't think. Other than the Aroha thing, I don't think we have anything else that's that might require a vote for today. On the at least nothing that I see on the agenda. We could vote on this today if we wanted. We could vote on this. <clears throat> um, uh, is there anyone who would like to talk in favor of going to a two week cadence? Crickets. Um, all right, uh, I, uh, would someone like to propose a vote on this? I propose we vote on whether we should have meetings every two weeks or keep them scheduled for every week. All right. Um, well, 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 should know, I rephrase certainly, that? <laughs> so, certainly less meetings always better, but it seemed to me that you know this forum here um, it's important for us to not only communicate, but because of the backlog, we still have quite a lot of work to do. Uh, I, I would prefer to be actively managed that if we don't have significant things to do, then, then, then canceling that than um, not having uh, the time clocked on the calendar because, you know, as in, in my case, if it's not there, it's going to be taken by something else. Yeah. I I, yeah. I think go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, even we have a weekly TSC meeting, we still need more interactions on the mailing list and other ways. 
Yeah, I, I just see there's a bunch of issues that maybe we're not addressing um, that, you know, I think we could address more with a meeting and discussions such as, you know, every project seems to say that they're having a lower participation now, or at least the working groups. I know the performance and scale working group, the participation's way down. Um, the learning group one I just read, and you know, they're struggling from the sound of it to, to keep going. And I don't know, you know, I think, I think we need to start having those kind of discussions. What can we do to improve participation across working groups and maybe some of the projects? Sounds like another topic we should add to the backlog. Snicker, snicker. <laughs> Feel free. <clears throat> That's a good uh, point. Okay, so um, would anyone like to second uh, Mark's call for a vote? I hate being formal, but what are we so what is the what is let the me question? let me let me yeah. re, re why don't re, you try to rephrase that? Yes, I I would like to propose that we keep weekly meetings. Thank you. Yeah, I'll second, like to second that, that call for sure. vote. Good. Uh, I second that. Okay, so second that. I mean, we're not changing anything, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are reaffirming. We can uh, just express our displeasure with this whole thing. <laughs> okay. I'm happy either way. Um, with it. So I think what you heard is, is that everyone on the call is opposed to moving for two weeks and we're all in favor right. of sticking with it. So let's just leave it at that. Yep. Okay, now that does bring up the second question, which is um, I think um, uh, this, this issue of the backlog continuing to grow is, is um, <coughs> becoming somewhat problematic. Um, so let's just open up the floor to how do we go about clearing the backlog um, on it? Um, so, Salon, I'm going to start with you. Do you have, um, I want to talk a little bit about sort of what you're going through with getting these topics on the schedule? Yeah, so um, the bigger thing is, you know, I have been occasionally posting things to the email list to ask that people try to start discussing different pieces of it, and it hasn't quite gone the way that I would like for it to. Um, you know, like proposing in regards to frameworks, proposing different ones. And so um, I'm hoping that maybe it can be a little bit easier now that we have the wiki. And so if I propose these different topics and put a wiki page and maybe um, either make it public or, uh, you know, do some kind of structure underneath the, um, the TSC section in the wiki so that we can actually have a discussion either via the wiki or via email, so that we can kind of get something written. I think that people feel a little bit comfortable, more comfortable with the wiki now. So maybe I can kind of point at that direction. But um, that's the kind of thing that I was kind of looking for is that we can take some of this discussion offline a little bit more and maybe start to work on actual documentation of it. So it's, it's not just email threads that become kind of chaotic and hard to follow. Um, some of that is, so the ambassador's reboot is actually my fault and I, I'm getting that all organized and it's not completely organized. So I haven't brought it to y'all yet. Um, but some of the other things like trying to figure out what to do with some of the other groups and committees and working with them has been hard. Um, and so bringing that to the group to help discuss it would really be nice. So um, <clears throat> that's that's kind of how I was looking at it. You know, of course, Brian wants me to put everything on the mailing list. <laughs> and I put everything on the wiki. <laughs> so we're kind of, you know, <clears throat> versus the other <laughs> a little. <laughs> but at so, the time, if you've noticed on the, on the agenda for today, for example, on the Aroha stuff, I actually pointed to the mailing list from the wiki. So. Sorry, just uh, just one thing that I would note about that is that there's no names associated with the items that are currently in the backlog. There's no, mm -hmm. who, who's the responsible party for bringing those into, um, well, bringing them to closure and ultimately bringing them to the TSC discussion, preparing for the discussion. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm guilty of this. Each, as I say, we all point to each other and like- Well, else so I, I, I would just sort of take a, a page from you know my days in W3C, and I'm sure are no you know 
did this as well. Um, just put, you know, every every you know action item should have a name and a date associated yep. with it, um, or it's not on the backlog, right? I mean, that's that's how it has to be. Yeah, I agree. Completely agree. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I'm guilty of this. I there's a couple on that backlog list that are my responsibility. I'll put my name and schedule time to talk about. It. So ambassador reboot. That's Solana. Yes. Yep. And date. Uh, end of the month. Okay. I mean, you know, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, not it to, right. you yeah. know, I'm just saying you need to help us understand when you think you can get it done by it. That's right. I think what we have to do here. And, and each of these items, every time we have the backlog on the agenda, the names and dates should be on there. And right. if something is not moving, we just remove it from the backlog. Yep. Okay. Yep. I can add that. Not a problem. Okay. So who's the I, have... is that Dave? Is that you? Yeah. So let's go yeah. through that list. Test nuts is Dave. Yeah, that's me. That could be today or next week. It's like as soon as possible. I have a, I have a proposal for that. Um, why don't you put the proposal out? Because I think we have to go through the Aroha thing. I think it's going to be like, yeah. oh. That's correct. So we'll push it out like next week or the week after because we're going to be talking about Aroha for the next couple okay. weeks, I think. Yep. Next week. All right. Yeah. Project readiness. That's me too. Um, that's a chew on. Uh, that'll probably be towards the end of the month, maybe early April because there's quite a bit of work still left to do in that. Okay, and what is this? This is creating a proposal for project readiness, or just bringing the discussion up? Grand unified theory of what uh, what it. project readiness means. We have it all over the wiki. I'm trying to put it all into some coherent top to bottom. Here's what you need to do. Here's all the things you can do. All those <clears> things, <throat> right? Okay. I can get more checklist ready and easier for the TSC to go through and look at what we're doing right. and seeing how we're doing it. Also making it really available to the public so that they know that when we sit there and when we, you know, when we vote for the TSC to sit there and say something is, is out there and going that we've actually created a checklist that we can sit there and say, these are all the things we looked at. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so Dave, that one's assigned to you, again, right? Yeah. The yeah. I'll, I'm probably early April on this one. Um, the idea is that if you're doing all the things in this, in this, product readiness package that in real life, your project is pretty healthy and ready. Okay, right. does that does that subsume the vendor diversity? Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. okay so both of those are really the same, are really part of the same thing. Mm -hmm. right. Yep. Right. Okay. And I think awesome. vendor diversity is gonna be a very big part of the Aroha discussion. Uh, yep. Yes, that's the expectation. Um, uh, election of the new chair, who's responsible for that one? Um, at this point they are um and i'm kind of trying to give them some guidance on that but it hasn't really gone down yet um because i feel like they don't even really have enough people to figure that out so um i have to circle back on that but to be quite honest i kind of neglected it with boot camp okay well so. let's let's make sure we at least get a name on there for for who would be the responsible party for driving it yeah I'll and, and, and for the moment i'll be about it maybe. It mm -hmm. sounds like it's you. Yeah. At least for, it's, it's, for sort it's of bouncing bringing back this over topic. to me. <laughs> yeah. Bringing this topic to closure. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's so not ideally how I want to run the working groups, but yes. Okay. And Mark, the discussion you started to queue up, um, we should capture that as a discussion topic. Okay. Which is that um, at some level, it's uh, overall engagement in projects. Right. Um, and since you brought it up, kind of put your name by it? Sure. Okay. Date? When do we want to do this? Um, I don't know, mid April. Okay. Um, Rai, can you also work with Mark on that in regards to some of the numbers and the scripts and getting that together? Uh, of course. Thanks. And for okay, the okay. sake of blocking out some time, um, I, we should put Indie moving to active status. Um, and then also the semantic version of Indie SDK will be hitting 2.0. So those two should be on kind of the upcoming okay. agenda. Okay. And maybe instead of calling it backlog, we should just call it upcoming agenda items. Okay. Or action items. Or action items or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, uh, Nathan, you can go ahead and like add, you know, it's on the wiki if you want to put in the descriptions in your name and date. Okay. 
that would work. All right, cool. All right, um, let's quickly do APAC bootcamp and the BC bootcamp. All right, so um, APAC bootcamp went really, really well. Um, we had uh, over 100, and 100, I believe 133 attendees, um, 110 on the second day. Um, it's kind of hard to explain just how engaged everyone was, but it was a really hard working crew that got a lot done. I'd say about 80% of people onboarded about two platforms, um, sorry, projects, and um, close to 50 did three based off of the numbers that each of those groups had in their rooms. Um, and then I had a few, you know, Pokemon, let's collect them all kind of people who like ran around trying to do all that. The Russian team from IP chain was like kind of going really gung ho on it to the point where they were exhausted by the end of the two days. Um, <clears throat> but I had six different developers, two um, with not very good English come up to me and say that this is the most productive event that they've ever attended um, because it was so developer you know, centric. And um, the fact that we had about a third of the sessions in Chinese was a really big deal to a lot of the attendees. And we actually sat down with the Chinese working group and there's some big changes that um, Dave Hughesby and I are gonna be doing to the wiki um, to make it even better for uh, localization and internationalization of the documentation going forward. Um, you know, I, I believe, um, Nate, how many documents did y'all get translated to Chinese? Um, there's uh, three. Um, one of them is the, the very, very sizable sovereign glossary. Um, and we're seeing um, a lot of active translation going on even still. So um, there's oh, awesome. six or seven folks who are, are very aggressively moving through documents at this point. Yeah. Uh, and Indy was our star pupil. <laughs> They were the rock stars at the event. Um, they had anywhere from 30 to 50 people um, at their uh, at their side um, pretty much the entire time. So uh, I think that re went really well. Um, <clears throat> and uh, Aroha had a lot of people. They had, you know, 15 to 20 people at any given time in their room as well. So they did. Good. Yeah, so they did really well. Um, which was kind of surprising because a bunch of people came not knowing anything at all about them. Um, and that was the thing that I think that a lot of people got out of it is they were like, wow, we just didn't know that there were this many projects and they didn't realize that there were this many projects that we could participate in. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think it, it went, it went really well. Um, Rai, Dave, did you want to say anything about it? Or, or Baha, because he was there. He was there. Yeah, Nathan. I was going to defer, I was going to, defer yeah. to uh, Nathan or Baha. Yeah, actually, I like uh, the table discussion uh, style. Yeah, that's uh, they encourage more engagement between those developers and uh, other uh, attendees. Besides, for the cello project, uh, we have uh, two sessions, and uh, for each session, there are over twenty persons. Most of the, the focus on the question like uh, uh, if I want to make some uh, like a blockchain service solution, how can I leverage uh, Cello or can I use it uh, for the production purpose? Some questions similar like that. Uh, um, totally, I agree uh, with uh, Selena. It's a very uh, successful event and uh, we should consider to make it a uh, uh, regular even uh, for uh, for each year or maybe or half a year. Yeah, I had basically, I don't know how many people at this point from China say, when's the next one? And I need to bring, you know, my friends. <laughs> they're just like, they're just like, this was awesome. I need to bring more developers here. We can have more developers here. I could, you know, it was, they were very, very enthusiastic. I, you know, I had one comment that I wanted to add here that, that I got feedback on a lot. There were probably four or five people who came up to me to explicitly talk about this. I think just as in general, whenever we have a Hyperledger event, we should explicitly tell the audience that it is okay to do it in whichever language you are comfortable for or are comfortable in. Um, 
because I think a lot of the attendees came thinking they would have to do it all in English, which makes them a bit timid if they don't speak English very well. And when we told them all, you know what, just do it all in Chinese if that's what you want to do, we got a lot more active discussion, a lot more active work, I think. And like I said, towards the end of it, I had lots of people coming up to me saying, you know, this is really great. We didn't know we could do it in Chinese. You know, thank you. This is great. You know, so I just wanted to point that out that if you happen to be at a meeting of Hyperledger and there's multiple languages being spoken, just tell everybody, just do it in your own language. It's fine because we can find translators. Is it uh, considered as a new diversity? Yeah, I mean, consider that like a, a, just a pro tip um, along the lines of diversity and, and inclusion, right? Like, yeah. we're an international organization. People doing things in their native language is perfectly fine. Yeah, but I, I guess um, it will bring some difficulty for those uh, American or Europe people. You know, uh, in China, we are technical guys. We know uh, both Chinese and uh, English. But uh, yeah. Sure, I think it really mostly applies to live events like this where we're all in the same room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we are setting up the wiki to actually facilitate that so that we can have the multiple translations and we can have the translations going in the other direction because the China Working Group has been pretty dedicated to the translating into Chinese and they also are into translating from Chinese into English. So I think with Chinese we can support it the easiest. Um, we're going to see how it goes with Portuguese in Brazil. Um, but I guess the main thing is, is the fact that, you know, we are structuring things so that we can handle it. And at the very least, we can use some of the other translation tools. And uh, this do, is where do I, you, or, or would you have live translation at events? So we had some live translation at this one, um, where basically, when I explained how unconferences work and how this was a curated unconference and what we were doing, um, Scott kind of paralleled me to explain that, which is one reason I think we got such a high level of engagement is because Scott the entire time like walked them through how to create an LFID, how to update the wiki, all of those different things as we were doing them. And so I think that went really well. I would also like to, to compliment attendees. The wiki was very good to give preparation work for the different sessions that occurred. Um, we had, a, I would say the majority of the people who were in our sessions the first day had already done all of the downloading of Docker containers um, and had done some experimentation with all of the pieces that we were reviewing. And that really accelerated the process and got folks to where they could start doing tra active translations or log bugs and uh, start looking at code. Um, and that made a big difference. So. Um, having that preparation work in place and making sure that the wiki is populated ahead of time um, really helped us cover more content. Thanks, Nathan. Okay. Good so, discussion. Um, I, had, I had a question, uh, if that's okay. I know you want to keep moving. Okay. I want to um, I, I yeah. make sure we, we have plenty of time for the Aurora thing, so I want to get through this. As yeah. Do we have something in place to track um, the return on investment, if you will, uh, to put it in business sense. Um, you know, how many people from this are actually going to start contributing to Hyperledger? Is there something in place to track that somehow? I don't have that kind of tech yet. I'm sorry, Mark. I, I'm asking for it, but we'll see. Um, however, we did have everyone at the end um, come up and we took down all the names of all the contributors who did actually manage to contribute. And we even had a few bugs fixed. Um, and I'm going to be sending out prizes to all of them. Um, and I have their email addresses, uh, but I did not have anything where we're matching up their LFID to their GitHub ID kind of thing to make sure, sh or, or, yeah. So I don't have anything along those lines right now. I don't have those capabilities. Well, um, and just um, anecdotally, we can, we, I can confirm that we have about seven different contributors from the group. That, came, that haven't hadn't done a commit for, but have contributed some content to Indy. Um, and then also um, for the folks who are there in the Hong Kong area, Cyberport has invited us back to do a follow on event in May, um, which will have a kind of a similar format because they had some folks express the desire to come back and do another round. All right, so, um, 
it, if it's okay, I'm going to cut the discussion off at this point. Um, Solana, we've got boot camp contributor summit and the DNI meeting. Can we finish those in five minutes? Um, yes. So the contributor summit is still um, ongoing. Um, still trying to find a location. Uh, I just met. I didn't know that there was a Japanese contingent for Linux Foundation there. They don't typically do Hyperledger, but I'm going to be um, talking with him as well to sit there and find the locations because he said that he might be able to help me. Um, and then uh, for the DNI meeting at OSLS uh, at the Open Source Leadership Summit, Nathan, you will be getting a call <laughs> because I think I've basically sold them all on Indie um and figuring out how to tie indy to the lfid to get the dni meetings without having to worry about all of the privacy issues um because you know y'all solved that so well already uh so that's that's both of those two all right any other questions for solana on the boot camps contributor summit and dni meeting All right, um, so let's queue up the discussion on the AROA. Um, uh, Nikolai, I sent around a uh, proposal for moving AROA to 1.0. Um, Nikolai, you're on, right? I thought I saw you earlier. Yeah, I am around. So would you like to take over the discussion? Yeah, I can briefly summarize what is said in the request. So yep. we're really close to uh, the to the image which we depicted about the final version of Roja, like an enterprise grade solution. So all the features are in place. We're just fixing the remaining issues that, uh, um, that are present in the code. They are not severe, although. Uh, so uh, if you use the latest available version, that is completely fine. We're just uh, trying to run uh, like long-term running soak, uh, soak tests to observe whether any resource utilization is not um, is 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 fine. Uh, but so far, we would like to request the TC uh, on uh, the well to request the TC on approval for our first major release. Um, we've been active for like one and a half years. So over this uh, over this time, we maintain the required level of quality. Uh, all the code is under Apache 2 license. We've got sufficient test coverage. Um, our documentation is available in several languages. And today we've met uh, Rich from Hyperledger China Working Group and um, set up with him a process on how uh, they will approve the translations and help us with more contributors in this region. We also have completed the uh, core infrastructure certification and you can find all the details on specific things um, related to security requirements and so on in the description for this badge. We've got although two issues, one of which is the diversity of maintainers for the project and contributors specifically to the uh, Iroha node code base. And uh, contributors are comprised of mostly Ceramitsu employees and maybe, uh, well, well, there are some non Ceramitsu individual contributors, although they don't happen systematically. We try to fix our process and there is a diversity plan which is already in, in effect. And um, um, we also have weekly meetings where we meet our contributors. There are some. There is some activity right now in the direction for uh, Scala library. Although we really want to attract uh, companies who want to develop their you know, own blockchain solution and contribute with their vision and um, ideas about uh, DLT tools. So maybe if Alish can reveal the the curtain a bit or or Sara. Uh, we can tell more about that. But as for now, this is in progress. We're discussing with some of the companies their possibility of allocating resources in order to make maintain, uh, to make the set of maintainers more diverse. And of course, diversity includes um, not only, let's say, a vendor diversity, but also gender diversity. And we try to reach 
out to local communities uh, related to that as well. As for DCO, that's the se second thing. And uh, some old commits are, are not conforming to DCO requirements. As Hyperledger Charter imposes um, uh, um, the rule that all of the contributors, all of the contributions have to be signed off. Um, we don't meet those standards right now because all commits are not signed off. So we've got a plan on how to fix this issue, which has been re um, reviewed with David, but it has to be approved by the legal team of Hyperledger and also by TC, I guess. Um, in general, our user um, base is pretty big and we've got a lot of uh, users in rocket chat channels. So we've got pretty active telegram chat. We've got some questions on Stack Overflow. And the cool thing is that our Docker image has been pulled uh, 54,000 times. And it means like uh, from scratch. So uh, those are valid numbers. And um, on Wiki page, you can find more details and uh, um, go over the diversity plan uh and uh, over the actions that we think will help us reach more diverse state in terms of uh, main code maintainers um and there's also a plan on how to fix the issue with um sign off thing so um maybe alex can jump in a bit and add something about the diversity thing yeah hi everyone um what I would like to say, well, we cannot reveal the names of the companies, but there are two big companies that we are uh, discussing uh, to jump on the, uh, yeah, to help us with, you know, the uh, maintenance as well as uh, contributing to Iroha. Uh, we had uh, two presentations and they expressed, uh, you know, interest in, in joining, but it takes time, like with all big companies uh, usually before before they make a decision um, and before making any decision at the C TSC level regarding that i would also like to say that it seems to us that it's a chicken and an egg thing because uh, a lot of companies are waiting for a certain maturity level before they decide to join the task force to dedicate uh, some resources to, to, to such projects and i think nikolai mentioned this already uh, in the email that uh, we see that the closer we are to the final release the uh, the more people are looking into what we are doing they, they are willing to try roha but one thing is that you try the, the new platform and completely another thing is that you uh, commit yourself to uh, you know dedicate resources and contributing to the platform um, so maybe that's in short for the diversity and you know I, I would suggest this not to be an issue for today's voting. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and I think that's all from our side, except maybe for Sarah, if she has anything, she's our community manager. Maybe she, she got some points. Would you like to jump in? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to also um, say that Alice is right, and not only from the corporate point of view. As soon as we informed people from the community that we are getting closer to the major release, more people became, became engaged and uh, some people decided to work on Scala library. And uh, I believe that, um, that that's important for them, that the code is almost ready. I think that, it's, um, that there have been many changes in Aroha over the last one and a half years. And uh, now, uh, as we have a vision for Aroha, we have a roadmap, people feel more comfortable um, contributing to it and um, companies will as well, I believe. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, Can you guys comment on your outreach to universities or other academic institutions? Like, um, I know that Anopolis is looking at developing a master's in blockchain. Um, is that related to Aroha? Yeah, sure. Uh, one of our, our maintainers is actually, we, we actually planned um, some classes together on Aroha. So there will be two groups of people doing uh, assignments on Aroha, creating two different systems. And I believe they will be able to contribute it later to 
for the to the community. So yes, we're working with Anopolis University and also uh, Vadim uh, that actually presented Hiroha on bootcamp also found uh, some contacts of universities. And I believe that we will also try to reach out to other universities as well. And also uh, there is a project in Japan on which Vadim is actually working at the moment. And it's also in the university. So I believe we'll have some interest from that point. Yeah, so there is a university in Aizu and also University of, Mar uh, of Maribor in Slovenia. They used to work on fabric only, but now they're also exploring Hiroha. And I think they are also planning to join the learning materials working group and uh, potentially develop some materials uh, for, for different platforms. Are, are, you, are you seeing signs out of them like logging um, issues or um, you know fixing minor um, problems in the repositories? Are are they starting to engage at all in a development track? If you mean the Annapolis University that we're working with now, um, it's they have a course on blockchain, and uh, at some point, not right now, not at the moment. In uh, I think in two weeks they'll start the classes on Iroha, especially Iroha. They will have some lectures about how to use it, some basic info to introduce them to, that, to Iroha, and then they will make projects on Iroha, like use it. Um, I think there are some um, kind of, um, there are two tasks. Um, one about getting enrolled on different courses, and another one I think is uh, um, enrolling to to the basically to the universities like to we suggested to tasks and they can also um, make up their own task on Eroha. so they will be basically writing a code on Eroha. and they will probably contribute it to to the community later so it could be reused or maybe modified in some way um I have a question about the, uh, the note there on the Byzantine um, fault tolerant algorithm. Uh, first of all, I, I know that, so, so I think YAC is the crash tolerant piece. And then I know there's an ordering service. Is that a BFT ordering service? H how do they interact? And then I guess my main question is just, you, you say it's experimental now. What plans would there be to, to bring that into a production ready state? Thanks. So um, just before, I guess, the third release candidate, the team understood that under the, um, uh, the current uh, conditions, the, uh, the distribute or decentralized ordering service may um, split the network into several partitions if we don't modify the algorithm in a certain way. So there is an algorithm that is called Bosco. Uh, B-O-S-C-O, uh, like a, a synchronous algorithm for distributed systems or something uh, published in 2011, which um, has a different uh, requirement for the number of nodes, 7F plus 1. And it solves the problem, uh, in our case at least, uh, with this partitioning thing. So YAC itself will remain as a method in consensus, but the algorithm overall will change a bit and um, uh, we will just incorporate the second phase of voting in order to resolve the possible partitioning issue. Anyway, um, we decided to move forward with release because even knowing that we have already solution uh, as a design solution for Byzantine fault tolerant consensus, uh, we still need to test it out. We still need to have peer uh, review for this and possibly a formal model that can prove our uh, our you know assumptions and hypotheses. So um, we decided to move forward right now. Have uh, a consensus that um, is open to well that that is basically CFT uh, because ordering service can split the network into several partitions um, un under certain conditions. And in the future, it would be really easy to fix. We already have Jira tasks and design, uh, but we still need to verify it with academic community and uh, formal models. Thanks, that's, um, that's helpful. It looks interesting, that Bosco thing. Um, on, the, 
on the crash fault tolerant, uh, you mentioned about soak tests. Um, what kind of uh, what kind of soak tests have you run, and what kind of failure modes have you been able to simulate, like knock, knocking out nodes and so on? Is, is there anything more you can say about that? For now, those are just simple um, soak tests where we load one of the nodes in several configurations uh, constantly with like one transaction pr from a client per second and we emulate those with like 100 clients and 200 clients and the network configuration is like we've got 15 nodes those are distributed over amazon web service uh, uh, instances and we try to measure resource consumption and uh, throughput so we encountered some problems there they are localized and we are fixing them uh, we also requested, um, uh, based on the, um, based on advice uh, from David, uh, a cluster of nodes uh, from Linux. Um, I don't remember the name of the, of the service, but you can create an issue on GitHub, and they give you out uh, instances. So we just got today 31 uh, VPS where we are going to deploy those tests. Of course, the results for this test should be available prior to the release. So we are going to make them available. And in the future, there are plans to emulate um, some crashes so that you um, put down more than F nodes, then you well bring them up, you observe that the network still can function uh, and so on. We will Just to clarify, that. that is that is uh, CNCF is offering um, free nodes to uh, yeah, any exactly. project that needs it. So it's open to everybody in Hyperledger. Thanks. Okay, so I know that there were two other threads of discussion on the mailing list that I want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to ask the questions about. One is regarding the DCO, um, and the second is is the more general um, sort of long-term commitment to to the diversity issue. Those were the two big ones that were coming up in the discussion list. Um, so Nathan, you started the discussion a little bit um, on the chat channel. Um, uh, about the DCO. Do you want to ask your question at this point? Um, I think um, Chris and I both have questions on this area. Too. Yeah, so my first statement here is we've 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 done exceptions to DCO in some of the Sovereign Foundation repositories on a temporary basis, and we've always found that that made the issues much, much worse over time um, because it, it gets harder and harder to contact the developers, even internally at the company. If there's more ambiguity about the record keeping and getting approvals from the right management in order to make sure that um, everything is in order and can be contributed properly. Um, so... My question is, are the DCO issues internal to Soramitsu? Um, and you know, you mentioned that it's not possible to do a code freeze or a history rewrite to get commits signed. And I'd like to understand a little bit more um, what the difficulties there are um, and maybe push back a little bit on whether it's a good idea to wait. Okay, so um, we're still have, we still have some pull requests. Uh, they have no problem with DCO. Well, the DCO, um, we have in GitHub, in Hyperledger GitHub, there is a um, DCO bot that checks every commit uh, to have sign off in it. And previously, uh, commit history had a lot of issues in it. So it's like in 2016 and 2017, there were literally no sign offs. And I've sent some samples for those commits in, um, in, in, in the email thread. Um, so, if we move on with the release, we still need to fix them somehow. At the moment, it's really hard because there are some pull requests. So um, we've just got we we got a plan right now that uh, as soon as we decide to freeze the code completely, then we can put the uh, this version to archive so that anyone can check this the history of changes in the project and modify the unconforming commits. Um, and create uh, with rebase uh, and uh, create a new repository where we put the new version. That's you, the plan. You don't actually have to do that. Um, and they so we just have to check with um, LF Legal. But the way that, for instance, when we um, contributed the code originally, 
um, we didn't have sign offs on, but all the code was IBM. And so we were able to sort of make a, a blanket statement that the code that we committed. And so we basically, I think the archiving the thing and saying this one doesn't count and then creating a new one where there's a single commit that's signed off by, you know, Makoto san or somebody from Suramitsu um, with the, the right authority should be enough to, I mean, there's 99.9% of the code is Suramitsu. So I don't, I don't no, not really. We've got problem. more external contributors. No, actually, you, you, uh, well, that's, that's okay. Really, I just, I for, just did for the purpose of the DCO having it all in Suramitsu will make it a lot easier to, yeah. to manage mm -hmm. the history. Uh, um, yeah, I think so what there, Nick there was trying to say. I think what Nikolai's trying to say is that the early work on Aroha was when uh, Makoto san was in university, and I think there's multiple collaborators that were students that he was in school with or something. They're not Sormitsu people. Oh. Yeah. So the second okay. part of the question that was before is that uh, some of the sign off issues are external, like they are from the external contributors, and um, we still need to decide what should we do with it. So our approach should work if the legal team is fine with this, but we need to approve that. So in general, when a project comes in, um, we, we LF, I'm putting on my Linux Foundation hat. Um, we, the re, this is the reason we wanted to come in with a squash commit. Um, so there's, there's just no question. Um, if the code is already under Apache 2, and, and I'm taking off my you know, LF hat here, I don't see how it would be a problem to do you know, archive, oh. squash, and publish. Do we know if it was under Apache 2 at the time of those commits? I guess is the open question. Um, good question. Well, we so, don't have an answer for that. When, when, when Makoto san, you know, when, when he made the initial commit to put it under the Hyperledger org, there had to be some sort of a, I mean, uh, you, that's sort of like day one. I mean, Was it, it sounds switch? like we need to have did a just move the stuff. How did how did it get there? Yeah, uh, the initial it me. was with me. Uh, well, whoever. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, it's been a few years, uh, but I, as I recall, this was transferred in. Um, I could go look at the. I have access to the log and I'm willing to pull that and publish it if it's really important. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't see an easy way out. I guess what we probably should do is mount a more formal investigation of the early, um, you know, try to account for all the, the change sets that are not signed off, make a unique set of the contributor names, cross-reference them with Sormitsu, and then that gives us the ones we need to track down. Yeah, I think that's, it's, we're gonna have to just do it the hard way. I, I think that's right. I think, I mean, because Sormitsu, at least as my understanding before, was Sormitsu can make a claim for all of its contributions. That's correct, yes, because of their employment contracts. And so it's just the... Um, the it's just the external. Right. All right. Um, so we are almost at time. I want to make sure whose whose name is associated to getting that taken care of. Dave, are you going to work with Nikolai and group to make it happen? Um, yeah, uh, Rye has a lot more access, or you know, is a little more familiar with the the LF infrastructure. I don't want to volunteer him, but if he, you know, I'll do it. Um, but I may need Rye's help on this. Okay. So, so Mick, just, I, I have a related question though. I mean, independently of how this DCO issue is dealt with, there's the question of whether we are allowed to pinch our nose and, and live with what we have today and release that as a one zero, or whether we say, no, this needs to be addressed first. And I have to admit, you know, the plan that was put forward does not sound bad to me. I just don't know why we wouldn't do that first. Why isn't it done? Yeah. Yeah, no. It, My it, question it would be, be why isn't it done first? I think right. it has to be done before we... It has to be done first. But not only that, but I mean, I, I, I just want to touch on the, the just diversity thing just for a moment. I just did the numbers for the past six months and 99.9% .9 of the code is coming from Soramitsu. 
Um, and yes, there are a couple of individuals and people working for, you know, Spurbank and Yandex. But aside from that, it's all Sormitsu. So I understand that maybe people are working on documentation and so forth, but um, the, I mean, th this is a single vendor product, project still. I mean, and we need to, I mean, I, I, I think a plan is good, but I, I do think we need to actually get demonstrated that this is, this is more than one company's effort. So on that front, I have to say, I, I'm a bit puzzled with the situation we find ourselves in because in fact, you know, based on that very point, we shouldn't have this project be active. It should still be an incubation. And, and we, you know, we have agreed that we could have a one zero release in some cases, even if project was not active yet. And for that very situation, but now we are in a completely reverse situation where we are tying the diversity of the community to the one zero release when really it should have been tied to the status of the project. Yeah, if I may jump in, I mean, with, with do, by doing this, it will just hurt the project uh, further, you know, we, this can go indefinitely. So we will not be able to do 1.0 and people will be waiting for 1.0 and then everyone will be suspicious what is going on and you know we will never get there so uh, i'm not sure if this is the right strategy at the moment arno were you suggesting that maybe pushing the project back into incubation and then also doing a 1.0 if we can fix the dco stuff well i i kind of i i'm wondering whether this would not make things right in a way yes i i mean i we never really discussed this possibility of but i actually you know when i realized the situation we were in i'm like how did we get to active status first it seems like we made that move maybe a bit too casually and and i think if the project was still in incubation we would i would be more open to say yeah we can still have a one zero because the code itself is mature enough to to qualify as a one zero with the dco stuff being taken care of but i don't know if that's we we are willing to do that you know which would be like just like you said move back to incubation in in you know as a representation of the status the community diversity or lack of and then still have a one zero release because the code is mature enough i don't know okay so we <clears throat> sorry we are at time for this morning um let's make sure that this is on the agenda for next week um uh arno can i ask you to bring up exactly that discussion to summarize what you just said on the mailing list and let's get that discussion happening asynchronously sure I'll be happy to do Please that. Please do that. Um, I think I think your point is is a very good one, and and it want, it's one we need to explore a little bit. Um, uh, I I'm more comfortable with the quality of the code than I am with the diversity of the of the contributor base, and and I think teasing that out the way you talked about it is a great idea. So if we can if we can move that discussion on the mailing list and then conclude it next week. Um, do we have similar all numbers? We have yeah, I'll present a, a DCO report um, next week as well. Okay, that'd be great, Dave. Thank you. Do we have similar numbers for other projects, whether contributor diversity wise? Uh, Chris just said ninety nine point one percent. I'm not talking about uh, you know whether it's coming through a company that is being paid for by you know one of the main sponsor of the project. Uh, so that they would also subsume under uh, under the main uh, sponsor. So, what do we have those numbers for? So, fabric, sawtooth, and others. Okay, so Vipin, can I ask you to also bring that onto the mailing list? Again, we're at time, and I've got another meeting I got to get to, and I'm sure there are others as well. Um, I your your question is a very good question. Let's let's bring it up on the mailing list and see if we can get the information we need. Okay. Thanks, everybody. All right, all. Thank you very much.